I jumped back from the door as the man threw the flower pot at the door and he screamed like a maniac. What kind of freak? Opened the door with the knife in hand and pushed the man down with my shoulder. Why would you do that? <laughs> These true stories, man, they have an impact on me. Y'all have been having dreams, more dreams, a reoccurring theme, not necessarily a reoccurring dream, but a reoccurring theme. It's all about someone at the end of my hallway that I can't see and it's it's like it's dark right and i'm trying to turn on the light and i'm trying to yell at them but i can't scream and i think i figured out why i can't scream in the dreams it's pretty practical actually it's because i'm sleeping <laughs> irl and <laughs> when when i woke up and i thought about that i was like man because i i kind of woke myself up by making the noise if that makes any sense I think that's what woke me up because I remember hearing my muffled screams and waking up at the same time and saying to myself, that's why I can't scream in dreams. I'm seriously sleeping. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. So more testing. I'm going to continue this. I'm going to keep y'all updated. Okay. But uh, in order to properly test this, we need to continue getting scared. So we can watch some more true horror stories today. <laughs> it's Spy Nightmare Files. Make sure to head on over to their channel and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And if you like reaction videos and watching me get scared, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. Let's get into this reaction. This story happened two years ago when I was 25. Okay. I'm a home repair man and I often do work around the wealthy neighborhoods in New Jersey. Nice. Which is where I live. I used to do some home repairs for a retired rich couple. Mm -hmm. Their names were Rod and Dorothy. They okay. often went on vacations and allowed their children to rent their summer beach house. Oh, nice. But before they would stay there, Rod and Dorothy would hire me to do repairs. Yeah. This would have been the third time that I fixed the house up. Rod requested that I clean the gutters, fix the chimney, and make sure the beachside furniture would stay dry in the shed in case it rained. Okay. Rod and Dorothy allowed me to stay the night in the house in case of the thunderstorm. Cool which had happened once before. Man, staying at somebody's crib like that, a real, real nice house for the weekend. You know, even though you gotta do repairs during the day, you're not gonna work throughout the night. That's when you call your boys over and be like, you gotta get a load of this, bro. There's an 85 inch TV in the living room. Come over and watch the game with me, you know what I mean? Just a lavish house like that to spend the weekend. <laughs> that would be cool, man. I arrived at the beach house around 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. It took me about three hours to do my normal routine Yeah. when it started pouring rain. Because the roads would often flood, I knew it would be unsafe to drive, so I called Dorothy and told her I would be staying the night. Mm -hmm. She said that was okay and that I could help myself to anything in the kitchen. Nice. At around 7 a.m., I got hungry and went to the fridge to make myself a sandwich. Yeah. When I heard the sound of a glass breaking from the living room, uh -oh. I grabbed the butter knife and tiptoed to the living room. The butter where knife? I saw a broken window and a rock on the ground. Oh. Rainwater started to pour into the living room. Oh. Before I could even react to what just happened, I heard a large pound on the front door. I ran to the door and looked through the peephole and saw a man with long, wet, red hair wearing nothing but shorts and a large, muddy green t shirt. Uh uh. The man looked deranged. Yeah. He was breathing heavily. For whatever reason, I yelled out to the man, what do you want? The man reacted, looking through the peephole. He actually smiled at me, showing <laughs> his stained brown teeth. The man said in a very deep voice, open the door. I screamed, no. I'm calling 911. I ran <laughs> to the house phone in the kitchen and dialed for the police. But the weather interfered with the service, so I couldn't call for help. What? I ran back to the door and looked in the peephole and saw the man holding a flower pot over his head. I jumped back from the door as the man threw the flower pot at the door and he screamed like a maniac. What kind of freak? I opened the door with the knife in hand and pushed the man down with my shoulder. Why would you do that? <laughs> like, I know he's assaulting your door. <laughs> you have a butter knife. To... You said he was deranged. Are you prepared to kill another human being over a door and a flower pot? No. <laughs> no. This guy is not in your house. You are safe. Don't be a hero. You just never know, man. If this guy, if this guy cuts you or something like that, I, I'm sorry, man. I would not open that door. He fell down the small steps. I held the knife up and yelled, get out of here. The man took off running down the road and was laughing like a madman. 
I went back inside and locked every door and window. After about an hour of panicking, I noticed the storm settled down. So I took the opportunity to call the police, yeah. informing them of the situation. The operator sent an officer to the house along with the sketch artist. I gave my description and they left the house. I didn't sleep much that night. Rod and Dorothy sent their oldest son, Harry, to the house the following morning, so I was off the hook. I got paid an extra $50 for what I experienced, which <laughs> was a nice bonus, but not worth it. Here's $50. I have no idea who or what that man's intentions were, but I like to think he's locked up somewhere away from people. Yeah. I mean, that just seems like a random act of craziness, to tell you the truth. In my opinion, like, if somebody comes to your door and just knocks on it in that kind of a weather and you ask them what they want especially if they look you know the part of a crazy person and they just say open the door no first of all if you told me there was an emergency or kind of played on my humanity you know telling me something some sort of story that would have gotten me to at least consider opening the door for you maybe <laughs> getting a flower pot is also not going to intimidate me i mean don't get me wrong the situation was probably very very scary at the time i would not have opened the door first of all but i mean you just call the cops they're going to continue breaking windows if they come in the house all right let's say the guy just let's say the situation escalated and the guy just started grabbing more rocks and throwing them through more windows or you know getting uh getting more flower pots and or trying to break down the door you are still in the house until they come in and then you could defend yourself personally i'm a gun owner if that would have happened i would have had a weapon i still wouldn't have walked outside and shot the man you know that's not how i roll but i would have threatened him hoping that he would have left and i would have called the police what a weird situation man people react differently to different stuff like that i'm a small guy i wouldn't have took a chance all right next story this happened to me as a kid, maybe around two or three. All right. My mom and I lived in wow. a cheap single wide trailer in a real crappy trailer park. All right. I stayed with my aunts overnight a lot because my mom would work graveyard shifts. Right. Anyway, she picked me up from my aunt's house around 7 a.m. one day, and we went back to our trailer. I remember immediately not wanting to go inside, begging to ride my bike, but my exhausted mother just wanted to go to sleep. So we went inside, she laid in bed and being the annoying toddler that I was. I kept waking my mom up, asking to go outside and ride my bike. What the which heck? Which we usually kept in my room because if we left it outside, it would get stolen. Right. I told my mom I didn't want to go play in my room, so I asked to lay with her. While we were laying there, for some reason, I told my mom that there was someone in my closet and he wanted to hurt me. I don't know why I said it. She got up to show me that no one was there. And when she walked in my room, the folding closet door started to open and it got stuck on something. What? Turns out a previously convicted child molester had skipped bail in a new trial, watched my mom's coming and goings for a few days and broke into our house while what? she was at work. He took my bike in the closet with him, hoping I would come home looking for it. The only thing that kept him from jumping out attacking my mom was when the spokes got caught in the bottom of the door. Wow. Needless to say, we ran like hell out of the house. I guess so. And got in the car and drove away. Unfortunately, the guy got out of the house before the cops showed up. God There's really dang. nothing to follow up with. I'm just glad we got away. Dude, can you imagine? Oh my God. Bruh. in the closet and not just a crazy person a convicted child molester yo that that's the scariest th you see <laughs> realistically let's say you forget to lock your door okay if somebody has been watching you going in and out seeing your habits Typically, it's really, really easy to see a single mother's patterns. Wouldn't you agree? They go to work, they come back. They go to work, they come back. None of your neighbors are really concerned with the comings and goings if you live in a place like this because trailer park is pretty busy. 
there's a lot around here and I've visited some before and you can't tell whose car is where or what. Some people have their own driveways, but a lot of the time the driveways are small. So there's multiple cars parked at multiple locations and there's there's no real there's no real organization to a lot of it. So if you watched a certain house for a little while, nobody would ever know, you know? And if you broke in their house, probably wouldn't nobody would probably care, you know? Or you could just say, "Yeah, I'm I forgot my keys," you know? It's it's so crazy to think about that. When I got my house uh, not broken into, but walked into by that intruder a long time ago, it was an accident naturally, but um, it it was just like we didn't notice until you know we heard sounds. So if we wouldn't have been there, the intruder would have made himself at home, and if we would have gotten there and he would have been sober enough to realize that he wanted to hide from us, he could have easily made his way into a closet. Like, <laughs> that's that's what freaks me out about stories like this, man. They're so believable because they can happen so easily. It kind of kind of makes me crazy. Oh, gosh. That's why when I hear noises, I go investigate, man. I go walk around the house or whatever, make sure. And a lot of times, believe it or not, if I don't feel right about something, just to put my mind at ease, I'll go around the house and look around. Look around in the closets and behind the shower curtains and stuff like that. I don't know. Give myself peace of mind. I'm a paranoid individual, I guess. <laughs> maybe y'all say maybe y'all are the same. Maybe we all watch too much horror stuff. At any rate, guys, this is pretty good stories, man. Go check out Nightmare Files. His his this <laughs> Anyway, go check out Nightmare Files, guys. His link's going to be right there and in the description, as well as a couple other videos that I reacted to from him. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Odin signing off, and we'll see you next time. Break it down.